Vaid Ahmed and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about the classification of living organism. This is a very important topic for CSS and PMS examination and for the classes of metric and FSC. So we are going to discuss in detail about how the living organisms are classified and why there was a need to classify these living organisms. So from the starting point of view, why there was a need to classify these living organisms? We know that there are millions of species which have been discovered and described according to the biologists. Approximately 1.9 million species have been discovered and described. But yet so far, biologists believe that most of the species, these are the one tenth of the species up till now described uh, through the humans. So there are many other species which are under the sea or which are on the land or in the forest or in the desert which are need to, needed to be discovered. Why there is need of classification? There is a need of classification because we want to know that how these species interact with each other and help in the development of an uh, environment that is necessary for the uh, that is necessary for the survival of each organism on this earth. So their association study is very important so that we can study their association with humans so that we can find different uh, different secret uh, secret uh, truths or hidden truths in the in this earth so that we could be able to know about how these organisms interact with one another with the human with the environment and how they are helpful in maintaining the environment for that reason we need to classify the uh, each organism so that what role does each organism play in this world in this earth so this is the need why we need to classify the living organism so this chapter deals with the basically five four contents uh, first of all, we are going to discuss about the classification and taxonomy. Second, uh, second, in the second part of this video, we are going to discuss about the three domains of classification. In the third part of video, we are going to discuss about the four kingdoms of Eukaryota. And in the fifth part, we are going to discuss about the classification of plants. At the end, we are going to discuss about the uh, classification of animals. This is all about the content of uh, this chapter and we are going to deal each and every topic in very detail so be patient and learn the things from my channel so first of all we need before we start the classification and taxonomy topic we need, need to know about what this term means taxonomy the, this is the branch of biology that deals with the classification okay so this mean this is a branch which was established by the scientists to classify the living organisms we know that classification is very important if we if you work in office if you uh, work somewhere or if you in a simple computer you want to organize the data you need to classify that data according to the type of file or according to the what demand you need that's why there is a branch of science that is called taxonomy in which we need uh, we, in which we classify the living organisms that are being discovered with the passage of time so what is classification in scientific term classification has Certain means in different terms. In, in science, in term of biology or in term of science, this means the scientific practice of identifying. So, with which species, uh, uh, newly species are first of all identified, then they are named, named by the person who classified or by the will of that person what he want to name that and grouping and group them at which category or which terms of at a, at a certain level this matches. Uh, of living organism is called classification. So taxonomy is the study of classification while classification is identifying, naming and uh, grouping of living organism is called classification. So there is something when we uh, collect uh, different, or, uh, different organisms in one category that category is referred as taxon. So there are level of taxons. So each level of classification in and the study of biology is known as taxon. So taxon in biology, a taxon which is also uh, uh, which is singular and taxa is its plural is a group of one or more population of organisms seen by taxonomists to form unit. According to taxon is a unit, hierarchical unit of classification. So if you, if we refer to the humans, which are actually Homo sapiens, we are going to discuss in detail the classification of Homo sapiens in this lecture. Well, Homo sapiens are a unit so that is a uh, that is a species that we have identified to homo sapiens species is a level of taxon or taxonomic level so we at each category of classification in this uh, the study of biology is known as taxon so each each is a unit representing certain group so why there is a need to classify organisms we have discussed in detail 
they took to study the association of different organisms living in this earth and what system of classification is used for classifying the living organism Carl Linnaeus was the scientist who started the classification of living organism so his classification uh, is binomial, binomial uh, nomenclature of classification which means each species or each organism in this universe is given two names for that particular organism so for example as we are humans the scientific word of human is homo sapiens that's the two names homo and sapiens how homo homo is a basically uh, basically we can see that homo is actually the genus our uh, genus and its uh, species we are sapiens because in this world there, there uh, is description of evolution so we know that uh, from the study of uh, scientific literature though there has been some uh, contradiction with that so we know that there are different types of animals that has existed in this world they were tall they were uh, homo erectus such as so there was certain other species of humans now we are mostly known as homo sapiens sapiens so that is the reason that the uh, binomial uh, normal uh, normal classification system is being used okay what is the taxonomy hierarchy each of this is a taxonomy hierarchy so I am going to define each of these species. Species is the lowest, uh, lowest system of classification. A certain group of uh, people or some organism forms a species. So like humans forms Homo or uh, uh, sapiens. Homo sapiens. These are uh, sapiens. It's a species. A species. In uh, we have a lot of humans through the world. So there had been previously humans that were different. That were. Uh, unable to breed. So at this uh, at that level, so, sapiens are we, we can breed, we can mate with our uh, partner. So they have been as a known as a species. The species is a kind of organism that can interbreed with itself. So if the two organisms can breed with them uh, with each other, they are, they are produced if it is uh, successful at a productive uh, offspring. So they are species. So one category is basically a species. Uh, this is a taxonomic hierarchy. The lowest one is species, and the highest one is human. A group of species form a genus. A, uh, 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 many a uh, group of uh, genus forms a family. When many uh, and when family combine together, they form an order. So when order are combined, they form a class, and then class. Uh, when many classes are combined, different classes are combined, uh, but, uh, some of them have sharing characteristics, uh, characteristics they form phylum. When many uh, phylums have certain characteristics in nature that match with others, they reach the higher level of classification that is kingdom, which represents a broad category that includes many many organisms. These include limited number of organisms, this include more number of organisms, this include more number of organisms, this more, this more, this more, this more, finally this contains all the organisms. So this is our domain is the highest category of classification, our kingdom is the second highest category. In domain, we can describe all the organisms that are living in this world. At the level of kingdom, we have classified these domains uh, into kingdoms and further go on. So we are going to, uh, uh, I have defined there are eight different levels for classification and there is a mnemonic or a mimic for learning this taxonomy hierarchy because this is an important part and most of the uh, objective question can be from this uh, section. So this level of classification can be Dear King Philip came over from Great Spain. So first level is Dear which represents the part of domain King represents the kingdom P Philip represents the phylum K represents the class O over represents the order from represents the family great represents the genus and the S of Spain represents the species so these from this uh, mnemonic we can learn the taxonomic hierarchy. So first of all, the, the sentence is Dear King Philip came over from Great Spain. Dear domain, king, kingdom, Philip, phylum, came, class, over, order, from, family, great, genus, Spain, species. So we are going to classify these all uh, three, three 
organisms from our uh, 1.9 million species that have been discovered. We are going to classify these three organisms. First one is gulab, which is also known as in native English rose. We are going to give the scientific name and scientific classification of. Then we are going to classify cheetah, leopard. Then we are going to classify humans, which we are mammals actually. So, so first of all, you can see that at the domain level, gulab, whether cheetah, whether human, they fall in the same domain. So, most of the organisms like this fall in the same domain. So, we can draw it like a pyramid. So, domain is a broader term, then it's a kingdom, then it's a phylum, then it's a class. So, then at the, uh, then is order, then is family, then is genus, and finally the species. So, for any classification, they are, they are, this is a, a pyramid that represents the taxonomic hierarchy. So for uh, domain, Kolab is also from Eukaryota domain. From Hita is from also Eukaryota and human Eukaryota. So moving on to the roses, we know that as a plant, so the kingdom planted. But these both organisms, cheetah and human, are animals. So they belong to the kingdom animal. And we know that there are a number of animals in this world. So we are animals, cheetah is animal, uh, uh, crocodile is an animal, so they all come under this category. But we have two differences, we have to differentiate at the base level these organisms from us. Next is phylum. So from the plant phylum, from the very plant kingdom, there are many phylums in the plant. So phylum, mango, euphyta is actually for rose. And the next is for the phylum, uh, for our cheetah and human is same quadrata quadrata. And quadrata is one of the characteristics feature that actually defines the vertebrates animals. Those animals which do have backbone are called vertebrates and quadrates also uh, quadrates is a major category that represents the vertebrates. So quadrate have five factors. Um, in order to uh, classify the level of quadrate, they have five features. We are going to discuss in the topic of vertebrates and non-vertebrates when we are discussing the classification of animals. So class Mangania fight again and mammalia, mammalia as we know that mammals, mammals are those which have hair on the skin as humans which uh, give birth to the animals. Some of there is exception those uh, lays eggs. Uh, one of the CSS examination question asked uh, name name some uh, uh, there are mammals that do lay eggs. Yes, there are mammals. Spanning anteater is one of the mammals that lay eggs. Pangolin is one of the mammals that lays eggs and they are found uh, uh, near the Australian region. They are found in the Pusinamia. Pusinam, yeah. So there are certain mammals that lay eggs. Next level is class. Uh, we have discussed about the class, mammalia, mammalia, mammalia. And order proceeds. We both, uh, these both are carnivores as they carnivore eat meat. So we are also omnivore, we know that. Uh, that's a different perspective, but we do fall in the uh, order of carnivore. Family, Rosaceae. Family, Felidae. Felidae is actually a cat family. So, cheetah is represented from a cat family. And uh, family of uh, humans is Hominidae. Genus, Rosa. And uh, genus of uh, cheetah is Pardus. And genus of human is Homo. Species. Indica, Rosa Indica, the special type of red color rose is Rosa Indica. So the scientific name is represented by two things, genus and species. Scientific name is uh, binomial classification according to scientific name is classified by two level of hierarchy that is genus and species. So if we are pronouncing rose as scientific name, that is Rosa Indica. Rosa is a genus and species is a Indica. So Rosa Indica and Rosa many are there. I have told you there before species of uh, uh, cheetah is pardus pardus so there are pardus pardus and there are pardus other pardus is a genus and pardus is a species for the humans uh, uh, genus level is homo and species level is sapiens so they are called homo sapiens i have told you about the homo erectus that was another species of humans so this is all about the uh, classification and taxonomy. So moving on to the next topic that is about the three domains. Three domains are Archaea, Eukaryota and Prokaryota. So we are going to discuss uh, in detail uh, about the three domains. Three domains. 
first of all, first of all, uh, we have discussed all about the classification of living organism. Why there is a need to classify the living organism? Then moving on to this uh, second part of this uh, lecture, which is about the classification of living organism in detail. First of all, we have need, need to discuss about three domains in which all the organisms of the uh, world fits in. First is domain bacteria. Second is domain archaea. Third is the main nucleata. So we have living organisms. We consider all the living organisms that are classified under three domains: the main bacteria, the main archaea, and the main nucleata. So there are certain reasons that uh, these all are considered living organisms because they have, they can move, eat, and they can reproduce. They have senses. So these are the characteristics of living things. So there are certain features that living organisms uh, do differentiate at the broader perspective that is the domain level. Domain level at domain level, bacteria, nucleus is absent in bacteria while in archaea uh, it is present in nuclea. Uh, so what I am trying to say is that uh, domain bacteria and domain uh, nucleata were the firstly covered domain after a certain period of time domain archaea was covered, discovered. The domain archaea organisms belong to the environment, they inhabit the environment that is extreme in conditions. So these are the organisms that live in extreme conditions. So uh, basically domain bacteria contains the prokaryote and we know that in, in the part of cell biology we have studied that uh, a bacteria, uh, prokaryotes are those organisms which do not have true nucleus. True nucleus means they do not have their DNA covered by a cell body, nuclear envelope. This is the basically cell and it's, it's the nucleus. So it's nucleus and it contains the DNA all over it. So they don't have the boundary. So in that case, in the case of domain bacteria, nucleus is absent. In archaea, nucleus is absent. While in case of nucleot, domain nucleot, uh, the nucleus, true nucleus, nucleot meaning true nucleus is present. While the cell size is varied size of domain bacteria, most of the characteristics which are being, uh, which have been listed here matches between domain bacteria and domain archaea and certain characters overlap with the domain archaea and domain bacteria. So that is why domain archaea is placed in between domain bacteria and domain nucleata. So uh, the size matches of domain bacteria and domain archaea. Small organisms, they range between the size of small organism, uh, small organism like the largest virus and between uh, a small nucleot which is nucleata. So smallest cell of nucleata and largest virus is, is the basically boundary of the, uh, the size of bacteria and archaea. And uh, we know that virus is not a living organism. So don't confuse with that. Uh, virus is a non-living organism that only contains the DNA or RNA. Okay, next is DNA, uh, DNA genetic material. So genetic material of wild uh, domain bacteria is circular in nature and that contains no histone proteins. Why do we know that the genetic material is made up of uh, protein and DNA and a protein that is associated with DNA is histone. So first the difference between all uh, nucleata and other domains is that uh, DNA is circular in nature. Second difference is that uh, archaea contains the histones protein, uh, protein associated with the circular chromosome. While there is a, a, a circular chromosome with no histone protein, while domain nucleata contains the chromosome that is linear. We can see the shape of chromosome like this. This is linear. So this linear structure shows that, and they have associated protein that are known as histones. Histones are the proteins that are associated with the DNA for maintaining the structure. But in case, uh, in case of a domain bacteria and archaea, uh, these histone proteins are absent. Well, plasmid is an extra DNA, circular DNA that is present and the prokaryote and that is also a characteristic of bacteria and your archaea. So plasmid is present in them and this plasmid also contains the DNA that encodes protein and performs certain functions of the cell. While in case of uh, uh, domain nucleata, they do not have any plasmid. So plasmid is absent in case of domain nucleata. Next is membrane bonded organisms. We know that uh, we have studied in the part of uh, cell biology or life of a cell, life of living organism that cell is the basic unit of life. So 
basis of life is cell. So cell can, uh, there is a difference between procreate and nucleate. Cell contains variety of compartments normally that perform the function. So there are certain membrane, bo membrane bonded organs such as mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, body apparatus, and chloroplasts. So domain bacteria does not contain any one of them. Why? Domain archaea also does not contain this double membrane bonded organs. Why? Domain eukaryota contains this organelle well established in their cell. So they have mitochondria, they have Golgi apparatus, they have chloroplasts. The functions of these organelles is performed by the membrane of the domain bacteria or archaea. Next is ribosome. They contain 70 s ribosomes, which are the smallest ribosomes. Uh, domain archaea also contains 70 s ribosomes, but they are distinct from the bacteria. They perform the function like domain eukaryota. These ribosomes are involved in the process of photosynthesis, uh, protein synthesis, not photosynthesis, protein synthesis, and these uh, are more functionally uh, related to domain eukaryota. And while domain eukaryota contains plus 80s and 70s ribosomes, S means Swedberg unit. Swedberg unit. This means this is the rate at which they settle in the centrifugation. So, so uh, they have the largest uh, ribosome and they have more the protein. And they, but ATS ribosomes is present for the nucleus, protein, uh, synthesis, well, synthesis are present in the chloroplast and uh, mitochondria of the cell. And they are similar because these two organelles have been uh, adapted or evolved or associated from the previous uh, organism that have been used by the nucleus cell. So, cell wall. It is present in domain archaea and that is made of peptidoplasm. Why in domain archaea cell wall is present but that is not of peptidoplasm, that is of uh, any other uh, component. And the third one, domain nucleata contains cell plant, like domain nucleata plantae contains cell wall that is made up of cellulose, while, do, uh, while domain anemia does not contain cell wall, so they may be absent. Maybe of different baking meal because fungi contains the uh, cell wall that is made up of something else that may be of chitin, that may be of urine. So there is a difference. Why domain bacteria divide by binary fission, not by mitosis? Or domain archaea divide by the similar mechanism as bacteria. Why asexual and sexual reproduction, both modes of reproduction are present in nucleata and they divide by mitosis, which is an asexual method, asexual by. Uh, meiosis and uh, other ways. Okay, uh, so they uh, these cells exist in solitary or colonial form, which means they can exist as a single cell or they can exist in colonies. So and uh, domain archaea have the similar property, but keep in mind they have the strong protein associated. They inhabit the extreme environment. They do not inhabit the extreme environment. And uh, the, the and finally nucleata or uh, multicellular organisms. They may. Uh, we cannot say that they are form colonies or something like that because many cells make the organism. So colony forming is some different than cell. So they are multicellular, they may be unicellular. Uh, they may be, uh, they are unicellular, definitely domain bacteria and domain okay. So first of all we have discussed about three domains, three domains, and uh, we are we are not going to further discuss about the kingdom. We are going to the next topic that is domain data which has four kingdoms. We are going to discuss each and every kingdom in detail. First of all, kingdom Prototopista. Second is Fungi. Third is Plantae. And fourth is Anemic. So, these are the kingdoms which have been discussed. Okay, the organism um, belonging to domain Yotaka that does not uh, <coughs> align with Fungi, Plantae, and Emilia are classified as Prototopista. This is a simple definition. They are unicellular in nature, they are unicellular in nature, they are organisms that are not classified under them, and mostly protozoans uh, which live in varied environment are present in this domain, uh, kingdom, kingdom, protoptista. And they are the uh, unicellular eukaryotes, while they are the multicellular eukaryotes. They are the unicellular eukaryotes, they are the multicellular eukaryotes. Uh, the second uh, kingdom is fungi. Fungi can be from smallest to the largest size, as example of microscopic yeast, which is uh, where these are different from plants because they do not contain chloroplasts. They do not contain chlorophyll for the synthesis of, uh, of uh, their food. So they are heterotrophic nutrition mode. They can be autotrophic nutrition mode. They are 
heterotrophic nutrition mode, they obtain their energy from the environment. For like example, fungi on bread modes, fungi present on there obtain their energy from that bread. So they depend on the environmental energy. So plantae contains the chloroplast, they have chlorophyll, they make their own, they are automotive and by animal are heterotrophic mode. Plants have uh, plants have, have different characteristics, animals have different characteristics. What characteristics? They contain hyphae, hyphae, which are uh, which contains the nucleus and they have different mechanism or mode of reproduction. They exist in wide variety of nature. Uh, kingdom plant I, they, they have cell wall which is made up of cellulose. Uh, cell wall uh, uh, is divided into three layers, primary, secondary and middle lamella. Uh, plant cell uh, plant have uh, basically uh, uh, a mode of reproduction that is asexual and sexual. They have uh, gametophyte and sporophyte in this uh, in the life cycle. Uh, while animalia are do not uh, uh, have locomotive organs well established, they move from one place to another place. They do not have cell wall. While uh, plant cell have large permanent vacuole. While I think the animalia does contain small uh, temporary vacuoles in their cell. Uh, kingdom plant have chloroplast. Uh, which uh, help them to make their own food by giving them animals that do not contain chloroplast so uh, they obtain their food from the environment uh, there are plant uh, kingdom plant act uh, contains uh, no centriole that helps in this uh, help in the uh, uh, setting in, but they do not contain that only there are some other uh, way of doing of the cell while kingdom animal contains ends uh, basically, or please uh, like central which help in the cell. So, pro kingdom prokaryotic stuff, kingdom fungi, kingdom plant, kingdom animals all form fall in the eukaryotic because they all contain the prokaryotes. They all uh, have these factors. Say they have male chromosome. They have proteins associated with them. They have 80 and 70 S ribosome. Uh, they have divided section and section and they are multicellular in nature. So, this is the brief introduction and uh, tutorial one about the classification of the organism. In the second tutorial, we are going to discuss about the classification of uh, plants in detail and in the third tutorial relating uh, to the classification of the organism, we will learn about the classification of animals in detail. So if you like the video, do like, share, comment with your fellows. Thank you so much.